And we're joined by Major General John Neche, Director of Defense Information. He joins us from our studios in Abuja. Good morning and thank you for joining us today. Well, the police have spoken about the uh, multiple suicide bomb attacks in uh, Meiduguri. Again, University of Meiduguri suffering that unfortunate incident. Uh, there are reports that about 16 people uh, were reported in that case to have suffered Unfortunately, uh, they have died in that case. In spite of all that the country is doing, led by the military, tackling terrorism, are we progressing or do we describe this as, what, a retrogression? Can we ever overcome the spate of suicide bombings we're witnessing in the country at the moment? Yeah, good morning, Chamberlain. Uh, I will say that uh, we are progressing in the real sense of it. And we are going to overcome it. Why am I saying so? When you go into the records of how it all started some couple of years ago, and looking at where we are now, compare it in the recent past from 2015, whereby they don't have freedom of action, even in terrorism again. You know, as it were, they could just go into any public building like churches and mosques and then carry out these actions and you see very large number of casualties taking place but now that has been curtailed if i can conservatively say almost totally limited to isolated attacks now and then to soft targets now look at it the one that just happened 16 casualties terrorists how many seven then innocent people nine well, it's unfortunate that we had to lose those nine people. But when you look again at comparative uh, you know, analysis of the whole thing, it is that we are making progress. And I want to say that uh, when you look at it operationally and then uh, tactically, we, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an obvious case of uh, degrading them. That is, now we finish with the insurgents, I would say that to a large extent, more than 90 percent, it is now the terrorists that are left. So you know that terrorist, terrorism has got to do with the state of the mind. To indoctrinate them is more difficult than insurgents. These are people that have, their spirits, just like they have sworn an, to an oath that I must die in this. And that is why you see somebody even detonating, even without getting to maybe the target they asked you to get to. Now, looking at it from that perspective, that is a way that they can also be equally degraded by self-degradation and then sometimes the casualty we may not be totally able to avert it but i tell you with time that is why i am assuring the general public that is going to be a thing of the past as they right, continue to degrade themselves and then unfortunately maybe the casualties that we are suffering now but i want to also you. assure the general public that with the kind of education that is going on okay it's good to know that that is happening let me ask you this because when we had by the state government just hang on, Mr. General. Yes. When, when that, uh, after the swap happened, that uh, the Chippewa girls were released and that swap eventually happened, did the army expect a rise in suicide bombings? No, we expect terrorism. Because if you look at the dynamics of terrorism and the history all over the world, like I always said, they don't have a central command. They are not as coordinated as people think, no. They have dissenting views. And before you say anything, they can disintegrate. There are several factions of them as we speak. And these are the people that have already acquired the little technology of making these explosives and these IEDs. And they will continue. That is what you are seeing now. They are not under one command of the two commanders that people used to know, the two factions that they used to, used to know. They are various. And that is what you see happening. Every person is question, on his uh, own General. as it is now. Let, and, uh, uh, let me rephrase the question. What I'm asking is, you know, that those who have said they've watched the trend and they see that whenever we have uh, swaps and then uh, tribal girls are released, there's usually increase in the spate of attacks such as this one. Did the army expect an upsurge?
Yes, like I told you, if you are a good student, a strategic student and operational student of terrorism, you will expect it. It still goes back to the explanation I was giving. They are not united, they are fractionized. They are divided. And it may be that it is a group that released the 82 girls to us, and the other group is angered by that action, and they will begin to terrorize the public. That is what happens. Yes, it is expected. In jump a terrorist again. organization. Let me jump in again. Tell us about the University of Medjugorje. Why? Because, I mean, many will always ask, is it that the army is talking to them there, or uh, are they not getting the message? Why is that a target? No, University of Medjugorje is a target because, you know, their initial, at the onset, education, Western education is bad. That is one. So they want to target that place. And then secondly, I will want to see with all sense of, uh, you know, respect and then uh, response by the state government now that it was porous. There was, there's no perimeter fence in the university, and now you can see that the governor has come out and said, look, the place is going to be, you know, protected with trenches around the whole university. If I am right, by, I think, uh, about 20 million era yesterday was released. So by the time they fortify it and then cause an obstacle such that any intruder you descend and then you rise, you can easily be cited. So that was what has been responsible to some extent why University of uh, Medjugorje has been porous and it became a soft target for them. You know, it's a large expanse of land. Yeah. You, and you, you, I tell you that with this measure now, there's going to be some respite after the execution of that project. Okay, um, we know that uh, you have some degree of, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, intelligence reports that you get on a daily basis. How much of that report is helpful to you, knowing that uh, uh, you could have soft targets, especially during the festive period like we just saw after the Edel Fitters uh, celebrations? As a matter of fact, it happened that same day. Many people thought that it could happen during the day, and you had uh, security checks going into the prayer grounds. All of that didn't happen until late at night. What intelligence report do you have to help you? in your operations? You see, we have so much intelligence. And when you have intelligence like that, what you do is that you now filter them to see the ones that are credible and not. Like I tell you, and with all sense of uh, respect to the people in the notice, we get a lot of intelligence from them, both for night and then day, you know, of the activities. Okay, for instance, the one we got alongside with the Director of State Service, Directorate of State Service. It worked, and it was nipped at the board. But I tell you, it would have been more than this, what you are seeing, if not for the intelligence we got. So we get quite a lot of intelligence. And of course, because we still have collaborators, we still have people who are, you know, sympathizers with them, the intelligence may not be, you know, completely gotten as we desire. And that is why we are still appealing to the general public that those who are still sympathizing, they should change and give us more intelligence. Because, of course, even despite that it was in the night that it happened, there must have been some movements, it must have been noticed somewhere, there must have been dropped somewhere before they penetrated the University of Medjugorje. So that is all that I can tell you about that, that we get quite a lot of intelligence and we use them. Otherwise, what you are seeing would have been a lot much more than this. Okay, so speak to us about uh, uh, that. It's been circulated everywhere, which I know you also have heard about. The, they say there's uh, the army training a thousand military personnel in Pakistan for getting themselves set for war against what? Is it uh, Biafra? What you, you heard about that speculation. What, what's going on with that? Yeah, it's not true. And it is rather unfortunate. It's uh, a voicemail. And uh, as I was told and I made to understand that uh, it's somebody who is supposed to be an honorable Nigerian that was in Pakistan as at the time that the troops were graduating. Of course, Pakistan have a similar security challenge with us, terrorism, even as I speak. And we collaborate with them to train. That is one. That was what is, was responsible for us to collaborate with them because we need more force than what we, you know, we, 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 we required as at then. And our training facilities, yes, of course, we needed to stretch beyond Buniyadi the uh, Nigerian School of Infantry in Jaji and all the other places that we have. So we needed to collaborate with them. That was what informed it at the first place. Then secondly, when you talk about first generation, defense headquarters follow the 
proper manual of generating a force, which included the Army, Navy, and the Air Force, and then balanced up constitutionally from people with all the geopolitical zones. I tell you, I have the list with me. You have the Hausas here, you have the Igbos here, you have the Yorubas here, all, man, all of them represented even to the minorities. I see no reason why somebody will come up with such a report. And those people, we are trained to come back and rotate those who we have been kept there for about two years now. You know, normally, as a way of privilege, for psychological sake, we rotate people in mission areas and then in operations. And that is what it was meant for. So it is not true at all. It's not true. So that was what informed it to rotate people, and it is a continuous exercise. It's not, some, it's not a one-off thing at all. Speak so to us is about, about uh, pardon me to jump in, speak to us about this uh, controversy about the Army 38 that were dismissed. Begoban soldiers, 38 of them that were dismissed from the Army. Now we have a group of 22 who say that they were wrongfully summarily dismissed. They did not appear before any panel, any court martial, no notification. Some of them were not in the country, and the army dismissed them. Okay, I, I will say that uh, probably, if I am right, uh, the issue of 38. Let me be, stand to be corrected since you, have, you are the one giving me the information, because we have so many people that have left the service, if I will use that blanket terminology, left the service either on retirement or discharge voluntarily or compulsorily, as the case may be, or dismissal due to disciplinary action, as you have said. But is it that the people that left, that, 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 that were asked to leave the service, not dismissed, that were retired, probably they did not complete their length of service, if it is that, yes, I'm aware that some officers left the service, you know, for, that, for, for such reasons, but not that they were dismissed, because dismissal is, in a way, punishment. Okay, well, now, to get to your point, there are several reasons and instances where somebody can be asked to leave the service or to be retired. It can be administrative, it can be due to length of service, amongst others. But again, I want to say that it is not a right to serve 35 years. It is a privilege because there are so many conditions that come into play in the course of your service. First and foremost, there is this condition that people don't know about. When your services may no longer be required by the armed forces or by the military due to any reason, which top above all of them is security reasons. After a thorough secured investigation, and you become a security risk to the system, particularly the, the nation, the armed forces, and then your particular service. It can be recommended by a board set up for that particular purpose, or even an appointed investigator to recommend that. And at that point, it will be presented before the service board or council, of which, once it is tabled, it will be you know, approved accordingly. So it, is, it may not be except if you prove more than this that they were actually dismissed without any benefit or whatever because dismissal does not attract any benefit so that is all i know that yes we have them several services may no longer be required because of security reasons either if it borders on national interest or as the case may be